Rhett and Link wrote a horror novel? Let's talk about that. How is it going everyone? Welcome to the first video of the 2020 House of Horror Marathon and let's have ourselves a Bleak Creek conversation. The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek is a 2019 horror comedy novel from the extraordinarily famous YouTubers Link Neal and Rhett McLaughlin. You probably know them from their daily talk show Good Mythical Morning where they're usually eating disgusting foods, playing ridiculous games, or sometimes just chilling out talking about a specific topic. So needless to say when I found out that they wrote a horror novel I was pretty confused yet intrigued. They're mainly known for their comedic stuff, but as I always say, horror and comedy are different sides of the same coin. So I guess they just flipped the coin of mythicality and it landed on horror this time. Does anyone remember the coin of mythicality, you know, from those quarantine episodes? Yeah. Anyway, The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek is loosely based on Rhett and Link's own childhood growing up in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. The book is a sort of coming-of-age story that dabbles its foot in many different genres. As I previously mentioned, it's part horror, it's part comedy, it's got a little bit of science fiction thrown in there, and it's even got some deeply dramatic parts in it. The story opens in the early 90s with Rex and Leaf. Gee, I wonder where they got those names. As well as their sort of mutual love interest, Alicia. They all meet up at a local pig pick and barbecue in their small town, and attempt to film a scene for their upcoming short film, Polterdog. Yeah, you gotta love that name. Of course they're doing this without letting any of the adults know so they can get a genuine reaction from the crowd, and as you may have guessed, some shenanigans ensue and one of the adults ends up getting injured. As a result, the kids understandably get in a lot of trouble, and Alicia is actually sent to a local reform school for troubled youth, or lost causes as we'll call them. The school is considered a blessing in the local community, and the owner of the school is essentially a local hero. But no one seems to want to acknowledge that when kids finally leave the school, they come back a little different than when they came in. So it's up to the boys to devise a plan to rescue their friend, as well as to uncover the mystery of what's really going on at that school. So that's our basic setup, but there's a lot of other things going on at the same time. There's a young film school graduate attempting to make a documentary about kidney stones, there's this jungle boy that lives in the woods, and there's a bunch of other colorful characters that contribute to the story in their own way. So it's not just about Rex and Leaf, although they are the main focus, it's more of an ensemble piece. It's really akin to stuff like Stephen King's It or Stranger Things, and it even takes place in a similar time period. So it's really impossible to think about Bleak Creek without having those in your mind. And although it's clear that those may have been inspirations for this book, it still deviates enough where it's still its own thing. One thing that I really enjoyed about this book is that every chapter sort of leaves on a cliffhanger or a joke, or sometimes even both. So it really draws you in and makes you want to keep reading chapter after chapter after chapter. It's a super fun, easy read, and I like how wide the demographic for this book can be. Not only can you relate to it as a young adult in today's modern era, but also if you grew up in the 80s, 90s, or even the early 2000s like I did. It's incredibly nostalgic, and I can draw many parallels from my own life with the characters in the book. When I was a kid, I was always carrying around my big VHS camera and filming all kinds of crazy stuff with my friends. That aspect of my life is very similar to Rex and Leaf in the book, and what I can assume Rhett and Link did in their own childhood. The only difference is that they're still best friends and I have no friends left. Anyway, as I said, the book does have wide appeal, and you don't even really need to be fans of Rhett and Link to enjoy the book. In fact, I would say you could just plop this book in front of anyone, even if they don't even know who they are, and they would probably enjoy it. But I will say if you are fans of theirs, it will help a lot in terms of the humor. There's a ton of in-jokes if you're familiar with who they are as people, such as Leaf's picky eating. Although this quirk in and of itself could be amusing to non-fans, it just makes it so much funnier and adds a whole nother level of charm if you are familiar. I won't say that this book is shit your pants scarier, or anything, but it does have a few creepy moments and implications to keep the horror fan interested. But it's definitely not the kind of book that would keep anyone up at night or anything. I also really like the characters and the dynamics between the characters. It's obvious that there would be chemistry between Rex and Leaf because they're best friends in real life, but also the Jungle Boy type character Ben is loosely based on one of their other childhood friends. And I don't know man, as I'm reading this book, Janine just sort of gives me Stevie vibes. So it's clear that they really brought a lot of themselves and their own experiences into this book. And and as I was reading it, it was really playing out in my head like a movie. At the time of this recording, I know that they've been shopping this around to different studios in order to get it to turn into a TV series. And I just want to say, you guys, if you're looking for a director who will work for cheap, I'm your man. I've uh, directed a feature film, I've done scary stuff, I've done comedy stuff. So yeah, uh, slide into my DMs. Hey, and if you guys even want to have me on the show sometime, let me know. I can even come up with my own ideas. We can do a uh, blind fruit snack taste test and we'll have it brought to us on the patent pending fruit scootin' boogie. Well, actually, 
if I'm gonna be exposed to that kind of audience, I need something that shows my face the entire time, not a blindfold, but uh, we'll come up with something. But yeah, everyone just tweet at them incessantly until they let me on the show and let me direct Bleak Creek. I'm just kidding, or am I? Overall, I really enjoyed The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek. If I did have any criticisms at all, I would say that it does wrap up pretty quickly at the end. But on the plus side, it does leave it open for the story to continue further. And I hope that we do get a sequel, or it does turn into a TV show down the line. You can pick up The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek wherever books are sold. And if you're a fan of Rhett and Link, or you're just a fan of nostalgic 90s stories, this book is absolutely essential for you. So go check it out. Well, that's about all I have to say about The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek. If you guys have read the book, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts about it. And if you guys haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you know when I come out with new videos. And if you were to give this video a thumbs up and maybe share it with a friend, it would be greatly appreciated. What would you guys like to see from The House of Horror next? Let me know. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow for another video. And as always, take care and stay spooky.